Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for, for coming to listen to my presentation. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for, for maintaining this conference and the organizers of, the, of this session. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hearing some very interesting presentations. Um, so I'm going to present my work on, uh, on modeling and simulating uh, intensive biological systems, uh, namely uh, anaerob anaerobic digestion uh, bioreactors. So uh, this is a bioprocess that's used um, uh, in particular in wastewater to break down organic matter, uh, but also to produce uh, biogas. Uh, and so the most common type of uh, bioreactor that's used for this for this bioprocess is uh, a well-mixed bioprocess, bioreactor, sorry. Um, however, there are some, some newer types of, uh, of reactors that consider a, um, a spatial distribution and so basically the the the, the contents of the reactors are not yet, uh, are not homogeneous um, and so there's an important research question nowadays is what's what's the impact of heterogeneity uh, on bioreactor performance um, and so this leads us to consider how can we model uh, spatially heterogeneous uh, bioreactors and uh, what's really the interconnection between the biological and, and the physical processes um, at play. Uh, there are three types of models here that have been developed. Uh, the first types of models developed were uh, compartment models. So the, 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 um, the bioreactors considered to be uh, made up of, of zones uh, in, that are well mixed and, and so the, uh, the bioreactor is seen as in, in a network or an interconnection of, of well mixed zones um, and so you the advantages that uh, this uh, give leads to a, uh, a system of ordinary differential equations um, uh, which is a, a simpler than, than uh, the other types of models that are based on partial differential equations um then you have uh, some models that uh, you could consider reduced complexity models so they consider generally um, generally they only consider one or two special dimensions and no uh, real fluid dynamics simple fluid dynamics uh, and then you have a jump towards uh, very complex uh, cfd models um, and uh, it's only in the recent years that uh, uh, people have been able to, to uh, couple uh, complex uh, complete computer fluid dynamics with uh, with a biological uh, process uh, model. Um, and so the, the work I'm going to present here is a bit of a bridge, bridging the gap in between these uh, these two families of models, really uh, trying to. To, to develop a model that's not too complex that we can still consider using it for optimization problems, for instance, um, but that still represents uh, the geometry accurately, uh, namely uh, a three-dimensional model. So for this, we've modeled uh, an upflow fixed bed reactor. So this is a, a reactor in, operated in, in Mexico. Um, it's a vertical cylinder. And the fluid enters the bottom. Um, and travels towards the top uh, and so it travels through these thin tubes which are uh, the fixed bed which uh, help the microorganisms uh, attach themselves to, to a surface and, and helps growth um, and so this reactor is very interesting to study uh, issues of, of mixing and heterogeneity because we have a, a first the recirculation so from the, the output at the top uh, and recirculating back towards the bottom um, and then there's also a mixing system at the bottom um, and so by playing with these two mixing systems you can uh, play with how heterogeneous or homogeneous the, the reactor is <clears throat> so to model this uh, we're going to take into take advantage of the reactor geometry um, uh, specifically of the of the fixed bed and of the fact that we have these thin tubes and to consider that we consider that they're only a, a one dimensional um, to reduce the spatial dimension in in this section um, 
And the second observation is uh, that the, most of the biomass is actually fixed uh, on these tubes. So it's only present in this middle section. Uh, there is no, there is very little biomass in, in the top and, and bottom sections. Uh, so the result is a, a model that's made up of uh, an array of one dimensional tubular reactors in the middle and then uh, a three dimensional uh, zones uh, at the bottom and top. And so for these three dimensional zones, we need to take into account uh, fluid dynamics. For this, we consider a, a steady state Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, essentially, we're neglecting turbulence um, and considering steady state because the differences of time scales, right? Fluids uh, are gonna reach a steady state a lot faster than, than a biological system. Uh, pictured here, we have the streamlines for the bottom section and the top section. So for the bottom section, this is the, the, the entrance, the input uh, fluids. And here we have the mixing system, which is a pump, right? Uh, and these streamlines represent essentially the, the trajectories of, of a fluid particle. Um, and same thing for the top here with the, with the, the output um, here. For the biology, we use a, a, a well-validated uh, two-reaction model. It's a simpler model compared to the, the, some of the very complex uh, anaerobic digestion models. So in this model, we have a, a organic matter that's transformed first by a first population of microorganisms into uh, volatile fatty acids. And these uh, VFAs are, again, transformed by a second population of microorganisms into, into biogas. So this model is generally used in well-mixed, uh, uh, for well-mixed models, or chemostat type models. Um, and so we, we need to take into account the specific aspects of, of our direct and our modeling, namely uh, the fact that we could have some crowding effects in, in, in the tubes. And so for this, um, for the reaction rate, we consider so the classical uh, specific growth rates that are used, but we add an inhibition function, a biomass inhibition function. So this, this function, what, what this does is, is it limits the reaction rates when, when we have high levels of, of biomass, essentially saying, we're saying that when we have too much biomass in the tubes, then there's less growth. Um, and the second thing is we need to consider a death rate, right? So for chemistat type models, this death rate is generally neglected because it's taken to, to, taken into account in the uh, in the transport terms. So here's the full model: advection diffusion in the bottom and top section in three dimensions, and then a single dimension as equations uh, substrates. For the substrate uh, advection diffusion reaction, and then for the biomass. Again, only reaction and uh, and the death rate, um, and so the link in between the different sections is going to be done is is done with uh, with boundary conditions. Uh, so this this is still a a, a large model. Um, so the computational cost of simulations is is quite expensive, uh, and the result is that uh, the classical method to, to Fit parameters is is very complex with uh, for this model for this for this kind of model right the the the, the, the technique of, of minimizing the error in between the model output and experimental data um, it doesn't really work here because you need to do a lot of simulations so instead we used uh, parameters from a simpler model uh, it's a, still a spatial model so it's but a simple spatial model only considers two compartments. Um, and so this model was uh, fitted against experimental data. Um, and then we have some extra parameters. So the, so the biomass inhibition and the death rate uh, were fitted, um, you know, very simply um, against experimental data. Um, so pictured here uh, is the, the, the concentration of, uh, of the second substrate at equilibrium. Um, which is uh, homogeneous in, in horizontal directions, um, but there is a vertical variation. And we see that we're able to reproduce uh, the, the variations of experimental data. So this, this is the, these box plots represent uh, the experimental data that we, that we had. Um, and so we're able to 
you know, uh, represent the vertical variation, which is what we're essentially interested in here. Um, now, one one what's interesting with uh, with this model is that we can actually see that um, even if we consider initial condition with a homogeneous uh, in the horizontal direction, we can actually have uh, some heterogeneities that develop. So this simulation here starts with a very homogeneous uh, situation, and uh, eventually, as, as time goes on, you see that um, because it's the mixing system is not perfect, uh, the, 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 there are some some heterogeneities that develop. Okay, and again, these are translated in the biomass that. Uh, are different. And then what we can do is we can look at the, the impact of the mixing on, and, and the impact of heterogeneity on, on, um, on the biological activity. Um, so here what was presented is the, the, the values at equilibrium of, of the first and second substrates and also of the biogas uh, flow rate um, at equilibrium and as a function of, uh, of uh, the recirculation rates. So the standard conditions normally uh, for the experimental validation, for instance, are 150 uh, liters per hour. Um, <clears throat> and here we can see clearly that actually with a lower recirculation rate, the, the, the reactor is more efficient, we have less substrates coming out, and we have higher uh, biogas production. But, however, if we actually look at the, the profiles of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the substances inside the reactor, uh, you'll notice that for the low recirculation rates, we have uh, very high levels of biomass, unrealistically high levels of biomass. Um, and essentially, this, this is what explains why you have, you have higher production. If you have more biomass, you have more production, you have more depollution, decontamination. Um, but really, if, 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 if the model uh, reaches high levels of, of biomass, it's really because we're not taking into account in emission very well. And you can see this if you look at the, the growth rates. Um, and this is one of the issues of um, uh, uh, doing experimental, of, of fitting parameters because the values for which there was uh, uh, substrates were only very small. Um, and so the, the, the fitted parameters here in blue, we can see that for instance, for the specific growth rates, there's really, uh, there's no inhibition. Um, uh, and, and again, uh, so we were only considering a very limited amount of, um, of, of biomass inhibition. Um, and so actually, if we consider uh, more inhibition, so the red curves, if we consider red curves here, uh, more inhibition in terms of biomass and in terms of, of, of substrate inhibition, um, what we obtain is a completely different picture. Um, so with these, with these values, you can see that actually with more recirculation, um, we have a better performance, right? Um, we have more biogas produced and, and um, more, um, uh, uh, less, less substrate coming out. Um, and so again, we can see this as well in, in, in the profiles. Um, What's interesting to see is that in this case of, of inhibition, actually the profiles are a lot more homogeneous. Uh, um, so as conclusions, uh, it, it's interesting to see that the, this kind of simpler, simpler models can represent the physical, uh, the, the physical variations within the, the reactor. Um, and uh, it's uh, very interesting to see the, the impact of heterogeneity. It, it depends on, on the growth function. Um, so uh, we need to have a bit more experimental data to, to really represent uh, inhibition correctly and, and, and give a firmer result on, uh, on the impact of, of heterogeneity. Um, so thank you very much for your attention.